Lives of the Most Eminent Painters, Sculptors, and Architects by Giorgio Vasari Life of Raffaellino del Garbo, Painter of Florence Raffaello del Garbo, while he was a little boy, was called by the pet name of Raffaellino, which he retained ever afterwards, and in his earliest days he gave such promise in his art that he was already numbered among the most excellent masters, a thing which happens to few. But still fewer meet the fate which afterwards came upon him, in that from a splendid beginning and almost certain hopes he arrived at a very feeble end. For it is a general rule, in the world of both nature and of art, for things to grow gradually from small beginnings, little by little, until they reach their highest perfection. It is true, however, that many laws both of art and of nature are unknown to us, nor do they hold to one unvarying order at all times and in every case, a thing which very often renders uncertain the judgments of men. How this may happen is seen in Raffaellino, since it appeared that in him nature and art did their utmost to set out from extraordinary beginnings, the middle stage of which was below mediocrity, and the end almost nothing. In his youth he drew as much as any painter who has ever exercised himself in drawing in order to become perfect. Wherefore there may still be seen, throughout the world of art, a great number of his drawings, which have been dispersed by a son of his for ridiculous prices, partly drawn with the style, partly with the pen, or in water colours, but all on tinted paper, heightened with lead white, and executed with marvellous boldness and mastery. And there are many of them in our book, drawn in a most beautiful manner. Besides this, he learned to paint so well in distemper and in fresco, that his first works were executed with an incredible patience and diligence, as has been related. In the Minerva, round the tomb of Cardinal Caraffa, he painted the vaulted ceiling with such delicacy that it seems like the work of an illuminator, wherefore it was held in great estimation by craftsmen at that time. His master, Filippo, regarded him in some respects as a much better painter than himself, and Raffaellino had acquired Filippo's manner so well that there were few who could distinguish the one from the other. Later, after having left his master, he gave much more delicacy to that manner in the draperies, and greater softness to hair and to the expressions of the heads. And he was held in such expectation by craftsmen that, while he followed this manner, he was considered the first of the young painters of his day. Now the family of the Caponi, having built a chapel that is called the Paradiso, on the hill below the church of San Bartolomeo a Monte Oliveto, without the porta a San Friano, wished to have the panel executed by Raffaellino, and gave him the commission, whereupon he painted in oils the resurrection of Christ, with some soldiers who have fallen, as if dead, round a sepulchre. These figures are very spirited and beautiful, and they have the most graceful heads that it is possible to see, among which, in the head of a young man, is a marvellous portrait of Nicola Caponi, while, in like manner, the head of one who is crying out because the stone covering of the tomb has fallen upon him is most beautiful and bizarre. Wherefore the Caponi, having seen that Raffaellino's picture was a rare work, created a frame to be made for it, all carved, with round columns richly adorned with burnished gold on a ground of bowl. Before many years had passed, the campanile of that building was struck by lightning, which pierced the vault and fell near that panel, which, having been executed in oils, suffered no harm. But where the fluid passed near the gilt frame, it consumed the gold, leaving nothing there but bare bowl. It has seemed to me right to say that much with regard to oil painting, to the end that all may see how important it is to know how to guard against such injury, which lightning has done not only to this work, but to many others. He painted in fresco, at the corner of a house that now belongs to Matteo Botti, between the Canto del Ponte alla Caraja and the Canto della Cuculia, 
A little shrine containing Our Lady with the child in her arms, with St. Catherine and St. Barbara kneeling, a very graceful and carefully executed work. For the villa of Marignol, belonging to the Girolami, he painted two most beautiful panels, with Our Lady, St. Zanobi, and other saints, and he filled the predella below both of these with little figures representing scenes from the lives of those saints, executed with great diligence. On the wall above the door of the church of the nuns of San Giorgio, he painted a Pieto with a group of the Marys, and in like manner, in another arch below this, a figure of Our Lady, a work worthy of great praise, executed in the year 1504. In the church of Santo Spirito at Florence, in a panel over that of the Nerli, which his master Filippo had executed, he painted a Pieta, which is held to be very good and praiseworthy work. But in another, representing St. Bernard, he fell short of that standard. Below the door of the sacristy are two panel pictures by his hand, one showing St. Gregory the Pope saying Mass, when Christ appears to him, naked, with the cross on his shoulder, and shedding blood from his side, with the deacon and subdeacon in their vestments serving the Mass, and two angels swinging censers over the body of Christ. For another chapel, lower down, he executed a panel picture containing Our Lady, St. Jerome and St. Bartholomew. On these two works he bestowed no little labour, but he went on deteriorating from day to day. I do not know to what I should attribute his misfortune, for poor Raffaellino was not wanting in industry, diligence, and application, yet they availed him little. It is believed, indeed, that becoming overburdened and impoverished by the cares of a family, and being compelled to use for his daily needs whatever he earned, not to mention that he was a man of no great spirit, and undertook to do work for small prices, in this way he went on growing worse little by little, although there is always something of the good to be seen in his works. For the monks of Castello, on the wall of their refectory, he painted a large scene coloured in fresco, in which he depicted the miracle wrought by Jesus Christ with the five loaves and two fishes, with which he satisfied five thousand people. For the abbot de Panici, he executed the panel picture of the high altar in the church of Santa Salvi without the porta alla croce, painting therein Our Lady, San Giovanni Gioberto, Santo Salvi, San Bernardo, a cardinal of the Uberti family, and St. Benedetto the abbot, and at the sides, San Bantista and San Fidele in armour, in two niches on either hand of the picture, which had a rich frame, and in the predella are several scenes, with little figures, from the life of San Giovanni Gualberto. In all this he acquitted himself very well, because he was assisted in his wretchedness by that abbot, who took pity on him for the sake of his talents, and in the predella of the panel Raffaellino made a portrait of him from life, together with one of the general who was then ruling his order. In San Piero Maggiore, on the right as one enters the church, there is a panel by his hand, and in the Murate there is a picture of Saint Sigismund, the king. For Girolamo Federighi, in that part of San Pancrazio where he was afterwards buried, he painted a trinity in fresco, with portraits of him and of his wife on their knees. And here he began to decline into pettiness of manner. He also made two figures in distemper for the monks of Castello, a San Rocco and a San Ignazio, which are in the chapel of San Sebastiano and in a little chapel on the abutment of the Ponte Rubaconte, on the sides towards the mills, he painted a Madonna, a St. Lawrence, and another saint. In the end he was reduced to undertaking any work, however mean, and he was employed by certain nuns and other persons, who were embroidering a quantity of church vestments and hangings at that time, to make designs in chiaroscuro and ornamental borders containing saints and stories, for ridiculous prices. For although he had deteriorated, there sometimes issued from his hand most beautiful designs and fancies, 
as is proved by many drawings that were sold and dispersed after the death of those who used them for embroidery, of which there are many in the book of the illustrious hospital director that show how able he was in draughtsmanship. This was the reason that many vestments, hangings and ornaments, which are held to be very beautiful, were made for the churches of Florence and throughout the Florentine territory, and also for cardinals and bishops in Rome. At the present day, this method of embroidery, which was used by Paolo da Verona, the Florentine Galieno, and others like them, is almost lost, and another method, with wide stitches, has been introduced which has neither the same beauty nor the same careful workmanship, and is much less durable than the other. Wherefore, in return for this benefit, although poverty caused him misery and hardship during his lifetime, he deserves to have honour and glory for his talents after his death. And in truth Raffaellino was unfortunate in his connections, for he always mixed with poor and humble people, like a man who had sunk and become ashamed of himself, seeing that in his youth he had given such great promise, and now knew how distant he was from the extraordinary excellence of the works that he had made at the time. And thus, growing old, he fell away so much from his early standard that his works no longer appeared to be by his hand, and forgetting his art more and more every day, he was reduced to painting in addition to his usual panels and pictures, the meanest kinds of works. And he sank so low that everything was a torment to him. But above all, his burdensome family of children, which turned all his ability in art into mere clumsiness. Wherefore, being overtaken by infirmities and impoverished, he finished his life in misery at the age of fifty-eight, and was buried in Santo Simone, at Florence, by the company of the Misericordia, in the year 1524. He left behind him many pupils who became able masters. One who went in his boyhood to learn the rudiments of art from Raffaellino was the Florentine painter Bronzino, who afterwards acquitted himself so well under the wing of Jacopo da Pontormo, another painting of Florence, that he has made as much proficiencies in the art as his master Jacopo. The portrait of Raffaellino was copied from a drawing that belonged to Bastiano da Monte Carlo, who was also his disciple, and who, for a man with no draughtsmanship, became a passing good master. <laughs>